What do you think? Well, if it's his final game. Yeah. I'm, 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 they, they need a replacement. I think, don't you think first. that Wenger would have said by now that if he wanted him for next season? No, because if he did. I think the last three years, I think he's just signed a one-year contract every time and basically just come back at pre-season yeah. and they've agreed the contract and, and they've, they've got on. I mean, if you also think, look back to the FA Cup, that save he made mm. against Sheffield United yeah. was absolutely... He's been a great servant to club and country. Oh, he's just been an outstanding goalkeeper and I, I would argue still now he's the best English goalkeeper. At this present moment, yeah. Definitely. You know, as well as David James played against Turkey, um, David Ga D James has his moments um, lacks of concentration. Mm. That, fe that fella doesn't. His mm. problem is David Seaman approaching 40. Yeah. It's the, the agility, it's the movement of the feet more than anything, but he's still an outstanding goalkeeper. And he's still smiling. Now, we don't get the chance nowadays to do the old goal of the month competition, so how about a goal of the cup competition? Obviously, we'd have to do it a bit differently, and these boys are different. Hello and welcome to Chris and Dave's cracking 11 goals from this year's FA Cup competition. Why are we doing 11? I thought we said we were going to do 10 cracking goals. Because if we only show 10, we won't be able to get away with showing Jemson's great goal for Shrewsbury. But we don't want to see Jemson's goal. I don't want to see it again. Nobody wants to see it again. It was a fluke anyway. Calm down, Dave. I'm only joking. I'm actually a very good friend and wouldn't possibly embarrass an Evertonian like yourself by replaying the goal again. Thank you, I appreciate that. Right, here goes then, Chris and Dave's ten cracking cut goals, starting with Steve Pickford for Southport and a classic David Beckham free kick. And now here's Pickford, scored one, has he scored two? He has! How does he do it? Trained football analysts often use loads of technology to illustrate the goals. And here in the pub, we're no different with our computerised football pub table. Right, the salt here, this is Jermaine Defoe. Right. OK, so he picks up the ball about here, mm -hmm. yeah, he cuts inside, beats this man, and then fires a right foot shot straight in the bottom corner. It just goes bang like that. Fantastic. You can't, you can't eat that. That's Michael Dawson. Sorry. Carrick did well there, picking out Cole. Defoe just ahead of him. Here he is now. Pierce waits in the middle. Will Defoe need him? No, he won't. That's an excellent goal from Jermaine Defoe. It's his fifth of the season, and West Ham, boy, did they need that. Free kick then for Sheffield United. Plenty in the area. Away by Holland. And here's Brown with the ball in. What a magnificent and goal by Michael Brown. It was them that knocked you out, wasn't it? Sheffield United. Now, a few cup goals come much better than our next offering from Wolves' George and Dar. Sadly, George can't be with us today, but we do have his teammate Wolfie to talk us through the great goal. Wolfie, fantastic performance from George. <laughs> Hmm? Wolves take a quick throw in. This is Undar with Elliot tracking him. Still Undar, they're trying to squeeze him out, but he goes all the way and scores a fine goal. A rare moment of football and glory for Sunderland. Plus a fantastic finish from Crystal Palace's Julian Gray as he gets hold of the ball and he just connects so sweetly and it just rifles in past the hapless Jersey Dudek. The writing was on the wall and it was clear from that strike that Liverpool were going out of the cup. Not that you're biased at all, Dave. No. It's 
Mitchell Van trying to get the flick on. McKenna on the volley, oh yes! What about that? Friedman. Butterfield, that's a good clip cross. And they might have made something of it. They have made something of it. Gray has given Crystal Palace the lead. The best cross of the night. And the first division side take the lead. At last, a moment of magic from the super, super Leeds United. Harry Kuehl scores an exquisite goal against Crystal Palace in a strange game where we drew but went through. It's a fantastic goal with three things you've got to look out for. Number one, a brilliant run from virtually the halfway line on his own. Number two, the worst goal celebration ever. And number three, look for the guy behind Palace's goal who gets a little bit upset and throws his bag down in disgust. Pure magic. Kuehl and Mullins, good turn by Harry Kuehl, it's pretty much on his own, he might not need anyone, Harry Kuehl, oh fantastic goal, fantastic goal by Harry Kuehl, had no one around him and needed no one around him. Flax lays down again, and Henri is going to score. The holders in the lead at 2-1. Now that you've seen all the top ten cracking goals, just pick your favourite one, two, three, call us and you can be winning an equally cracking prize. If you're one, two, three, matches out of our expert panel, you could be winning a trip for two people to beautiful, bustling, bonkers Barcelona. The prize includes two nights accommodation plus tickets to the Barcelona versus Real Madrid clash at the New Camp. Here are the top ten goals again. Goal number one, Steve Pickford. Goal number two, David Beckham. Goal number three, Jermaine Defoe. Goal number four, Michael Brown. Goal number five, George Endar. Goal number six, Ruud van Nisselrooy. Goal seven is Gavin McCann. Goal eight, Julian Gray. Goal nine, the great Harry Kuehl. And goal number ten, Thierry Henry. Just call 090-11-110-880 with your one, two and three and you could be on a plane to sunny Spain in the very near future. Course cost 25p per minute, and please get permission from whoever pays the bill. Now, thanks to Radio One's Chris Moores and Comedy Dave. And if you'd like to study those goals a bit before making your mind up, just press your red button. It's there with lots of other goodies. Amongst them, our mini Motti competition winners, David Windsor and Douglas Hobson. There they are. They'll be offering an alternative commentary. They're rehearsing at the moment. Good luck, boys. Now we've got some goodies in the studio as well and certainly a few cup winners medals. Leading the way with for our special guest, Welsh manager Mark Hughes. Trading ever so slightly with three, Peter Schmeichel and with a fairly paltry two, Alan Hansen. I think you'll find it's four, three, two, one and in my way of thinking two beats one. Mm. <laughs> I just, I'll set them up for you. Right. All right, yeah. You knock just, them in. Yeah, okay, okay, that's no I problem. thought you would, but Wonderful. I mean, there's a few winners medals in it and it's a fantastic competition to win and remain so. It's just an unbelievable day. Um, watching the players on the, the pitch suddenly gets to me. I was all right in that other room for about an hour, and then I see the players on the pitch, and the sort of memories come flooding back what this yeah. trophy and competition actually means to the winners and the losers. For the winners, you get a, a period of elation like you'll never believe. You know, you, that rush of adrenaline, the elation, is just unbeatable yeah. in modern yeah, football. Yeah. For the losers, it's like you're the loneliest man in the world if you get beaten, and that's why... You know, 25, 30 minutes before the kickoff, the nerves, and you just cannot wait to get on the oh, you've, you've played in a record amount of finals. You don't know too much about losing it. You've experienced it once, but, I mean, your, your record, though, is, is, could be equal today. Yeah, apparently so, yeah. Um, I think uh, a, couple of, yeah, a couple of the players that possibly could, uh, could equal it. My, my, uh, my argument is, is that you have to do it in the, in, in the century. Um, <laughs> so, so they, they've, they've got to win I think it. you're safe with David Seaman. Exactly. Anyway. So, so my record's safe. Nobody will beat me in the 20th century. So <laughs> you'll have to get a few more this century. But uh, no, my feelings on, on days like this, uh, uh, you, you just can't compare them to, to one off games. They, mm. they, they're a wonderful occasion. Uh, there's a lot of emotion in and around the game. But uh, uh, the problem with uh, I found with the finals I've been involved is that you can never remember them. Um, that is always the, <laughs> that is the, always the thing that uh, struck me. Like everybody tells you, you've got to you've got to try and 
remember everything about the day if you can, but yeah. it's, it's very, very difficult. When you get to our age. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I mean, yeah, but the foreign one thing perspective is watched all around the world and Denmark yes. the same? Absolutely. Uh, it, it's such a big game and when I was a kid I was, I was dreaming about playing these, these kind of fans and, uh, and we go, going back to what we're talking about, how big a day it is and how much you remember afterwards. I don't remember anything from the times I won here, but the time that I lost is the one that really, really, really? sticks out. And it still hurts. See, that's negative. Yeah, I know, but... Right, I, we like, we like, we like being <laughs> negative. Negative's <laughs> good. But that's I like negative. how much it means for players hey. that, you know, the first one you remember as, as a yeah. great day, the second one, yeah. I won't say it, it, it becomes a habit, but the expectations of winning from where I play United, where we play, mm. you had to go and win these. So the one time you lost, it just yeah. so, mm. and, it, and it really hurts so much. And that's how big this day is, that if you come away as losers. And I am um, just- But it actually makes it even better after you've lost when you go back and win. Yeah, exactly. Because you know the experience yeah, exactly. of getting beaten. Yeah. And it's the worst moment in the world for you. It is. It, so it you've is, actually yeah. won the game and you haven't got beaten, which mm. is absolutely I, brilliant. I agree with and also, I'm, I'm a bit upset you've stitched me up here again. You've got, you've got somebody else in here that scored against me. 85 semi-final well, of the cup. That, he's a striker, he but goes you, without saying. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but, 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 I want you to know who gave you the pass in 85 against Liverpool semi-final oh, of the cup. Oh, don't say this. He's going to stitch one of his friends up here. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's relevant because he's here. Who was it? Was it? Was it Southampton manager. Was it Strachan? Was it Strachan? Okay, yeah. who, who remembers who passes him? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, I do. Can I just, I can I just interrupt it. for a second? I don't know whether you were watching this about 15 minutes ago, but Arsene Wenger and Trevor Brookin are uh, still uh, at uh, it. Tre- a... Trevor's doing my brains in, by the way. <laughs> Five minutes as a manager, no, it's like, you know, he's done their discussion where he's going to buy, where he's going to sell. No, he's go. actually telling us and Wenger what he should have done yeah. to win the championship. Yeah. He's saying yeah. Jermaine Defoe's available. Yeah. Like <laughs> Trevor's definitely stepped over the line, I think. He's, yeah. he's definitely a manager now, I think. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's won. What about the conditions? I mean, firstly, the roof's on, the pitch looks like it's it's a patchwork quilt, Mark Lawrence. Listen, listen it, Gary, it? I'm in the car going to this match yeah, with Mark Hughes, and he yeah, tells yeah. me the pitch is absolutely perfect and he's a Wales manager what chances has everybody else this pitch got? was laid on Thursday I know. this pitch is absolutely well, perfect for Wales I think I think I, well, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking rugby uh, again yeah, right? yeah. I think it's, I th- I think it's good news for Southampton the pitch you, know, you, want, you want a bad pitch you yeah. Mark, you're the underdog Mark, well, you, you've been pretty successful on that and, pitch and the Welsh fact they put the roof on it. defend it oh, no, so, well the point I was making in the car was well uh, my theory the point you were making very badly yeah okay my the theory I have about uh, previous cup finals and the ones at Wembley mm. was the fact that I always felt the pitch was too good because it was too lush, it was too green, and I always felt the, the ball didn't run yeah. quickly enough, so, so it was a slow game, so it was very difficult to, mm. to have a quality game. And what, the point I was trying to make would, was that with this pitch here, whatever condition it is, it may not look as good uh, from the, every camera angle, but I was saying but it plays I mean, would be what? quicker, so you're going to I'm starting to believe well. you. He's off a What about the, the fact that the, the roof's closed? It won't make any difference to, to, to the game, but the atmosphere and... Definitely make a, a difference to the atmosphere. Have you played with it? Oh, you've played with a shot before. I've never yeah. ever played yeah. with, it, with, with that, but I mean, the sound, I mean, we were here last year and the atmosphere was electric, yeah. and that was with an open roof. Mm. And if you close the roof, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be... T- Try to, to At least volume. we won't have that bit where you've got half the pitch in sun and half in shade. It'll look good on the telly. What's it, what's it like playing here with the roof closed, Mark? Well, I, I played here uh, for Blackburn uh, in the Worthington Cup final, so I was actually on, on the pitch. But um, mm. we've had games here. We had a wonderful evening here against uh, the Italians when, when the roof was closed. Mm. And the atmosphere that, that night, were, well, I've, I've never experienced uh, anything like it through, throughout the whole yeah. of my career. So, I mean, it'll, it'll have to go some today to beat that atmosphere. But uh, I think everybody's in the right frame of mind to try and have a go at it. OK, for the moment, gentlemen. Right, this should be quite entertaining. It usually is when Gordon Strachan speaks, let alone when he's talking to Alan here. So... Eighth in the Premiership, the Cup Final. Can it get much better? Um, yeah, if my golf's good this year, I'll be more than delighted what year that's got to be. But no, it's um, it, it's good because uh, I ask the players at the beginning of the season. Like we have to, every season you have to try and achieve more. And uh, 
I've told them this week they have achieved. They've, they're, they're achievers this year. They got more points than last year. They got higher in the league. They got to Europe. They got to a cup final. And uh, a couple of individuals have achieved by getting the England team. So it's, it's been a good year for them. And what about the the town Southampton at the minute? Is it absolutely buzzing? It's brilliant. It's really designed for people like ourselves who are not going to be in the Champions League and are not going to be in the you won European Cups, uh, no regular involved in internationals. It's for, for this club and for players like Marsden, Ormond Rod. I think they can feel for the one day that they're like champions. Because they're, 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 they're very unlikely to be in a championship one inside. Um, but there's a great chance they might be in an FA Cup one inside. So they can they become legends for the day and champions for the day. And what is Gordon Strachan going to be like in the day? I mean, you're renowned for having the passion and enthusiasm in the line. What are we going to see on Saturday from you? Well, I've been testing the suit out all, all, all today. I've been had it on the, the, the bedroom and leaping about in it, and it seems to be quite comfortable. It looks like it, it could handle a loony for the one day. <laughs> and what is Leslie saying about the suit? <laughs> is she quite happy with it? So, um, she's not seen it yet. Um, she's not seen the suit yet. Um, but I, I'm glad I've got a new suit, because that 1985 suit is now wearing a bit thin. Do you enjoy yeah. management? No. <laughs> Not the same. Oh, honestly. Why? <laughs> well, the only reason I'm a manager is because if you're a manager, you, you have full control of the coaching. That's what I, 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 I like doing is coaching. Um, I like to see people getting better. Um, and that's the only reason I'm the manager, because if you're not the manager, you're the beck and call the manager.